Oh, I know, I know what, I know what we can watch. I wanted to do this since my last stream. <laughs> oh, how, how about, how about, how about I do a continuation of my last stream? Because I'll, I'll tell you guys, I'll tell you what can't be copyright claimed. I'll tell you what can't be copyright claimed. My own fucking content. <laughs> So we did a stream where we went through all of the anime of the years. Uh, we, we went through all of the anime of the years. Um, the best of anime of the year. And uh, that was before I released this year's anime of the year one. So I guess I can do a director's commentary. I guess I can do a director's commentary on my own content. Because surely, surely, right? Right, chat? Surely. Surely that's, uh, that's viable. <laughs> Wait. <clears throat> Narcissistic much? Yeah. Yeah, I know. But hey, hey. I don't have to worry if it's going to get claimed because it's, it's my content. It's my content. I swear to God, if I if I get a copyright claim from freaking YouTube, <laughs> um, I hope I still have the original render. Oh, right, wait, it's going to be in renders, isn't it? There we are. There we are. There we are. All right. All right, let's eat. <laughs> All right, so I'm not going to repeat any. Uh, I'm not going to repeat anything I have ever said in my videos because I have original thoughts. Um, I have original thoughts and shit like that. Oh, this is cold. This is cold as fuck. I need. I need. Hold up a second, guys. My dinner's, my dinner's been so long that, um, what am I looking at? All right, let's just, let's just start this. Well, it's that time again. Another year has passed us by and with it has gone another year of anime. Woo! We got good shows, we got bad shows, but the real question is- This is, this the, is the real awards, right guys? I, I ain't gonna change the channel. This is, this is the anime awards right here. This is the, this is the anime awards. <laughs> 2023 was a year dominated by absolute heavyweight shows just completely Woo! taking over. Anime seemed inescapable whether you were a fan or not. Successful live action adaptation. You know, maybe Legendary next year is coming to an end. Memes. I think I'm, I so think, many memes. I think I'm going to do this next year. I had this idea. Uh, but uh, I, I got hired by Crunchyroll this year to, act, uh, to uh, react to their awards. I'm, I think I might do a community anime, uh, anime awards because you guys talk a lot of mad shit. Chat, you guys talk a lot of mad shit, right? And I 
would be curious to see if I ran my own anime awards with you guys doing the nominations and the votings. Will it be that much different to the Crunchyroll anime awards? Because uh, you got you guys talk some mad shit. Uh, let's. Uh, I would. I would be interested to see. Hey, what is the Giga community? What are they gonna reward, man? <laughs> just imagine. Just imagine. Just imagine for a second, man. Stuff like the influence of a handful of shows have truly seeped into mainstream pop culture and only continues to grow from there. But there were still some other things happening around our little sphere. Anime fans continue to find any opportunity to complain about CG. This time, even Demon Slayer was catching strays, with viewers complaining right, I'm gonna about check, how these fish look like an absolute joke. How dare any animation studio consider this acceptable quality? They cried. Meanwhile, in Isekai Land. <laughs> This is what peak CGI looks like. Togashi drew two lines and got 44 million views, 400k likes, and 100,000 retweets. Meanwhile, I'm out here drawing at least eight lines and I'm still waiting for Shonen Jump to hit me up with that manga deal. One Piece defied all odds by giving us a live action adaptation that didn't suck, while the Jujutsu Kaisen fanbase came together to collectively say, nah. I'd win. Which is what I think they say when they enter a contest of who can more effectively spoil their fucking series. But they would probably win against this random dude from Mashal. I am Rhodes! Is there, is there going to be a time where Jujutsu Kaisen isn't spoiled? I didn't think anything could be more spoiled than Attack on Titan. But, uh... <laughs> I think, I think... The Usher thing? Did any... Who, who here did actually see the Usher? Did see the Usher... Um, post, man. I thought Duolingo, spoiling it, that's how I found out, that's how I found out about spoilers. But, uh, when I saw Asha, I was like, not only has this gone mainstream, but this has gone mainstream, and spoiling it has now gone mainstream, man. <laughs> there ain't no stopping Jesus Christ and fans now. <laughs> I mean, look at him. He lasts like two seconds. Who the hell would play a character like that? Probably some dumbass hack. For real though, it's been 10 years now since I've been doing these yearly anime recaps. I have gone through a bloody decade of anime. 10 years, baby, 10 years. I can only imagine the wild things that were happening in 2013 back then. Hayao Miyazaki finishes his latest feature film, The Wind Rises. Just Do you know why I put this in the scripts? This wasn't even in the original script. The only reason this is in the script is because I did that stream watching all of my previous anime of the years. And I realized that I said this 10 years ago, man. <laughs> that, that, was the, that was the only reason I knew, I knew that I said this, man. <laughs> you guys did this. Before announcing his retirement from filmmaking at the ripe young age of about 197 years old. So that was a fucking lie. There are a lot of shows that didn't make my list this year. Not because they weren't Someone on YouTube asks, is, is your stream on YouTube? My stream is still on good. YouTube, yeah. Paradise was if fun. you want to so watch the full so seven-hour stream sure or whatever it is. Appreciate as much as Asia does. Today is not that day. Michoko Tensei continued my favorite isekai story of all time by having its main character go I cannot get it up. People have been trashing Rudy left, right and center, but I think he's proved he's a real gentleman by showing that he never, ever raises his sword at a girl. All right, let's get to my favorite shows of the year. But before we do, a quick word from my sponsor. I'm gonna be real with you guys for a second. I'm gonna be real with you guys. Uh, Michoko Tensei was originally on the list. <coughs> My show could say was originally on the list, but um, this turned out to be the longest video that uh, we, I think, longest main channel video that we've ever done. And I was like, I, I need to cut some shit out, man. I actually talked about less shows than I did in, than the previous year, but I feel like I spent more time really more focusing on each show rather than having some shows that are like just like one or two sentences so so i had to cut some shows out uh just because this would have taken like way too much time uh at, one shout out i want to give is to alan and the editing team because they went above and beyond on some of the editing for this they i, I really think they really fucking leveled up for the editing for this video, man. Bespoke Post. Bespoke Post is a monthly membership club delivering a box of oh, all spicy can... food and mystery gift. Uh, we've already video. had hashtag, hashtag ad for this one.
The zombie genre is probably one of the most saturated and overdone genres you can find in any entertainment medium. About 10 years ago, yet somehow in 2023, we still got an entirely fresh and original take on it in ZOM 100. ZOM 100 tells the sad story of mapper employees. Overworked and undervalued by the company overlords that run their lives, it takes an entire zombie apocalypse for Akira Tender to start living the life he should have. This show felt like a personal call out for anyone who's ever worked a dead end job in their lives and has daydreamed of something, anything happening to take away their responsibility out of their hands, even if that thing is the end of the world. Akira personifies that feeling of pure freedom we all secretly wish we had. That feeling that breaks the shackle of responsibility of having to go to work, of having to wake up for school the next day. Eren Yeager looks at him and goes, fuck that guy, which is embodied in one of the most impressive opening episodes all year, where you could feel that every single person working on it channeled their passionate hatred of all the previous employers that had ever wronged them. Unfortunately, it felt like a lot of the hype got taken away, largely due to episode releases being plagued with constant delays because of time slots and supposed production issues. Oh hey, would you look at that? Even though the show lost some steam as it went on and was tonally a bit all over the place at times, it was still a fun little show I think anyone could enjoy, because in this day and age where it feels like people are fighting tooth and nail just to survive, I think a lot of us could could use a story about one man reminding us all how to live. Let's go! Harem was never exactly the most respected genre in anime, but this year we saw the 100 go- <gasps> Alan- <laughs> Alan was surprised I didn't put this higher. He was like, oh yeah, didn't you put, uh, didn't you, didn't you put Rent a, Girlf Rent a Girlfriend over Jujutsu Kaisen? I'm surprised you didn't put this show higher. <laughs> <laughs> a friend who <laughs> love you, come along, and personally made sure that it never will be. <laughs> this is the story. That of just a shows how strong this year was, so guys. Times, Otherwise, I definitely would have put this higher. Riz. God took pity and gave him a hundred different girls he had to date, or they'd all die. This was like watching someone dying of thirst in the desert, and then God goes, "All right, I've got a solution. I'm listening. Just fucking drown him." But what God didn't plan for is that he chose someone who could chug the ocean dry and still have room for more. 100 Girlfriends has a concept so dumb it would need to be as batshit crazy as its own premise to even have a chance at making it work. And that's exactly why it does. It's stupid. It's unhinged. It knows exactly how insane it is and then runs with it 10 kilometers past where it needed to go. By all means, this show shouldn't have worked if we didn't have the greatest harem protagonist to bring it all together. <laughs> Yes, we were graced with the apex of boyfriends, the partner she tells you not to worry about. He may look like the most unthreatening guy possible, but watch him be like, Don't worry, I come in peace. Hi, what's your name? Peace. It's rare for me to laugh at a comedy anime, and even rarer when it comes to lowbrow harem rom-coms, but 100 Girlfriends was a showcase of how to do a parody correctly. Reinforced by Bibbery Animation Studio doing a bang-up job selling all of these jokes in the anime adaptation. They went above and beyond, and I can't wait to see how they adapt the manga beyond the- Whoa, whoa, wait, what, what, why are you all running away? Oh. Bro, I remember reading this. <clears throat> I thought- I had seen this panel before, and I thought this was like an edit. I, I just thought, oh, this must be a fucking edit. My fucking reaction when I read the panel, turn the page, and get- I, I, This like jump scared me. I was like, no fucking way. Absolutely no fucking way. <laughs> absolutely no- They put an entire light novel in this thing, man. I read the entire thing. Oh yeah? Oh yeah? Who who here read the entire thing? Who who here who here read all that? Who here read all that, man? <laughs> Imagine the poor translators. I know, man. I know. Me, me, me. I, d I don't believe you. I, I I don't believe you. What are you? What are you? Uh, what are you? A light novel reader? <laughs> what are you? A night light novel reader guy? My guy. <laughs> Imagine the voice actors, I know, right? In the minds of anime fans, 3D animation comes in two tiers. There's the Berserk 2016 tier, a show so disastrous it has scarred the anime community from 3D anime to this day. And then there's this, the aesthetic that looks like one of those games I apparently won't last five seconds playing. The real ones know though that Studio Orange has been out here creating their own tier. Every project they seem to continually push themselves, one-up themselves, and Trigun Stampede is their best looking show yet. Not just with some of the jaw-dropping action sequences and camera work, but small micro-expressions and camera animation that give their work 
just a bit more life. They are still continuing to push the boundary of what is possible in a 3D anime in every way possible. When I got the lucky opportunity to talk to a producer at Studio Orange, he called themselves the hentai of the anime industry. And, well, that's pretty accurate because what they've done with Tri- What a line, man. When he said that, I was like, I can't- <laughs> I, I, I was like, I can't believe you just said that, man. What, what, what a way to describe your studio, man. Gun Stampede has got me bricked up. All right, but how's the show? Trigun is one of the most beloved anime from the old school Adult Swim era, and when you take on the mantle of rebooting a franchise like this, you always have to contend with picky fans comparing each and every little change in detail. Vash's bounty is way smaller, he has a different haircut, different gun, character designs that looked like this, now look like this. Huh, now where have I seen this aesthetic before? Oh. The spaghetti western feel takes a backseat to fully flesh out a hard sci-fi story. It's more dark, more gritty. One of my favourite things from the original being Vash and Wolfwood's epic buddy cop dynamic feels... A tad more intense. I'll skin you alive and play with your bones until you're begging to die. You got that straight. Wolf, what? Make no mistake, this is an entirely new- Goddamn, does, does that scene not just summarize their relationship in a nutshell, man? <laughs> <laughs> Try gun. But one thing I can always respect is when a reboot tries to do something different that the original didn't already do, and by the end of the season, it becomes abundantly clear what all these changes were leading up to, and goddamn did it leave me wanting more. In a time where I feel like we're getting starved of- Trigun Stampede had a lot of haters, and I'm wondering how many of those haters really, like, stuck towards the end of Trigun Stampede, because- um, uh, if you look at the comments for when I talked about Trigon Stampede in my, in my original seasonal stream of it, um, a lot of people had a lot of different issues, uh, mostly to do with like the changes in the plot and changes with Vash and everything like that. And I think if you stuck along to the end, you would have, it was very, very clear why those changes were being made it it felt like it felt like a lot of the interviews that studio orange went through before trigon stampede they knew that the fan base was going to get pissed off and they were like trying to temper the expectations uh because it all just it all does lead to something but i will say that i i really do hope a lot of the people that criticize trigon stampede at the beginning did give it a chance to stuck around to the end because they would have seen Oh, like, I definitely had this moment when I was like, oh, okay, now, oh, oh, it, it all clicks now, it all, it all clicks, all right, now, I'm, I'm in this, I'm in this. Good hard science fiction anime, this has to be one of the most unique and interesting sci-fi worlds we've seen in years. And I honestly think the way things are set up, it has the chance to do even more than the original did if it gets future seasons. When people remember Trigun, they say, oh yeah, Trigun, I freaking loved Trigun. But if you ask them before that what they recommended we go back and watch, Cowboy Bebop, Full Metal Alchemist, Trigun has always been on that second or third echelon of recommendations behind the classics. And I fully believe that with what Studio Orange have set up with this season, it has the potential to go up to this tier. <laughs> yes, Full Metal Alchemist, alright, yes. Now, original Trigun is better than Cowboy Bebop. It's always been. I mean, genuinely, I think it's really, really good. Um, I know a lot of people prefer it to Cowboy Bebop, but in general, everyone I've met likes Trigun, but I rarely see anyone recommend Trigun anymore. Like, if you you can ask, like, you, you ask someone to like, oh shit, what's some anime that you recommend I go back and watch? Genuinely, like, I've not, I've not heard of a single person gone back and say Trigun. It, it's like... It's like, it's, it's, over, it's always overshadowed, but you, you mentioned, oh, do you watch Trigun? And everyone's like, holy shit, I really like Trigun, but like, ask for a blind recommendation, and it's like, no, nobody mentions Trigun. Bro mentioned Full Metal Alchemist, but not watched it. You know, that sentence was in the context of, yeah, if you ask someone to recommend a show, what are they likely to recommend? Full Metal Alchemist is definitely up there, my bro. <laughs> Okay.
Yo, you know best the song. Anime last best year song. That Let's go. The scene as fast as Oshinoko did. Our hearts were torn to shred in a tragic 90-minute opening episode. A new meta was formed as anime companies saw the feature-length opening premiere and said, "Wait, you can do that?" It's free real estate. The opening song became the very first Japanese song to top the global Billboard 100 charts. The people of my anime list came together and went, Fuck you, Fullmetal Alchemist! This is the greatest anime ever made! Then, everyone remembered there was an entire rest of the show you needed to watch. Describing the plot of Oshinoko is like, Alright, so there's a doctor who's a huge fan of this one idol, then and it turns this out the other idol he likes shows up in the hospital, but then it turns out he gets reborn as that person, but there's a crazy fan comes back and murders the young man or something, so he joins the specials, but then to find his mother's really traumatic. So, it's an idol anime? No. Sometimes Oshinoko is a victim of his own insane premise. Like, I don't even know if I fully understand this main character. A grown-ass, idol-obsessed man who gets reincarnated as the son of the girl he idolized and grows up being obsessed with his now mum and any other girl who even remotely reminds him of her. Like, if I call him a motherfucker, is he more likely to say fuck you or yes please? Here's a feed of Sigmund Freud's grave right now. But behind all that, the show shines as this interesting, no-bullshit, Instagram-filters-off look at the Japanese entertainment industry, showing you what really happens behind Behind those closed doors when the cameras are turned off. I hate the media! This was the show that tricked everyone into thinking they were watching another idol anime, when in reality it was almost the complete opposite. And the real ones know the true thing single handedly elevating the reputation of idol fans in 2023 is the sheer existence of Aoi Todo. With how popular this got, yes. I find it interesting how much I heard this title being thrown around last year when most people saying Fuck, it probably just, didn't even know I what an like Oshinoko is. Myself. See, in Japanese, Oshi means a person yes, who likes support, cringe, man. and in idol culture, it's <laughs> normally used to refer to someone's favorite idol. So the term Oshinoko has a clever double meaning that could be my favorite idol. Or what my idol's children, do that? which both perfectly <laughs> describe the show. Basically, what I'm trying to say is, Oshis like, yeah, are worshipped in idol fandom in the same man. way that Taylor this Swift has become something. the Jesus for white women. I am what is going on in the Oceanoka manga right now? Every week, I feels like the fan base just completely lose their shit. Sorry, I'm... I'm I pause during Alan's amazing edit during this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna reverse. Um, but it seems like every week, Oshinoko, um, Oshinoko, the fan base just lose their shit. I kind of, I'm, I'm interested. I mean, I'm interested. I, I feel like it almost feels like I'm watching the Rent a Girlfriend fan base re recently. I don't know what's going on, but that's that's the kind of like shit I feel like right now. Oshis are worshipped in idol fandom in the same way that Taylor Swift has become the Jesus for white women. I am Atomic. Bro, Alan cooked with this, man. He was, saying you're a fan of Isekai feels a bit like saying you're I mean, a fan I, re I remember, like, a lot of the openings, I was like, Alan, just keep things simple, Tasteless don't worry about it. The world has ever seen. You don't, you don't need to put, like, a, visit, and they have a, taste like a, a, like a trailer kind of bit for the beginning. A perfectly cooked Sunday roast. They try only save that to the end, and he was like, nah, crisps, nah, I'm doing it for eminence, man. I'm doing it for eminence. That is my eminence in Shadow. This takes every single trashy, cliche tropes you scoff at in Isekai and wears it like a badge of honor. Edgy main character, an army of girls in his harem, blatant power fantasy, nonsensical plot lines, cheesy dialogue, boobs. You know it shouldn't work, but it wears it all so proudly, you start getting convinced that it's actually cool. It's not that it isn't stupid. It is stupid, but it doesn't give a fuck if you care or not. And I thought this would eventually run its course, until I kept watching and realized that this has a more interesting plot and better world building than 90% of isekai out there. Which actually says less than you think. For as self-aware as it is, it spares no expense in building up this fully fleshed out world with so many moving parts. Every new... I would like to see more people talk about the world building in Eminence and Shadow because it, it is genuinely like obviously I made the joke where it's like, yeah, it's, it's one of the best in DC Kai. Just doesn't say a lot, which uh, you know, there there are a lot of shows that don't have a lot of good world building, especially in the East Kai genre. But you know, it it makes you realize that in order to parody and in order to really subvert tropes, you really just need to make a good fucking story by itself before you start doing all that shit, you know? It's it's more than just surface level shit. New arc, you see the dominoes being perfectly laid out. It's all set up for Sid to come in and top with them on the biggest stage possible. And even though you know it's happening, when the moment comes, it delivers. Every. Single. Time. This was the most fun I had with any show all year. And just when I think the plot has nowhere else to go, season two ends with a world shaking development that made me go, fuck! Why aren't more Isekai doing this? I guess what I'm trying to say is.
I can't wait for the movie, man. I can't I can't wait for the Eminence and Shadow movie to see where they take the story after the ending of like season two. Oh, oh it's gonna be so hype, man. It's gonna be so hype. I really miss Greg's. There's a movie in production. Uh, yes, it has been announced. The next part of uh, Eminence and Shadow will be the movie. One man's freedom. Compilation or actual movie? Actual movie. Actual movie. Is another man's genocide. Aaron Yeager. Probably. Attack on Titan ended this year and the internet had opinions. If you only browse Twitter, you might have thought half the people either think this was a masterpiece ending. No flaws, 10 out of 10, we all won, we all lost. Eren is a bird. Or the sending ruined the series, ruined the characters, made the entire show pointless, spat on the legacy of everything he had done. No one's going to remember Attack on Titan now. Eren is a bird. Today. It's just the internet in a nutshell, isn't it? It's just, that's just the internet in a nutshell. We're going to talk about how to stop smoking crack. Now with real people I've actually talked to, the consensus seems to be that this was a satisfying conclusion that did everything it needed to do. I had my slight nitpicks with the execution of this ending, but absolutely none of it took away from my love for Ugh. this series as a whole. What that was a good meal. Has achieved, that was a good meal. It's, it's 11 p.m. right now. Reach of anime, <laughs> is a bit later have lunch, uh, a bit later the have dinner, right guys? Shows of this, era. this might not be my favorite ending of all time, but it is certainly the ending to one of my favorite anime of Did all it? time. So for one last time thank you attack on titan only those around now will know that feeling of after years of waiting through final seasons of final parts of final episodes 2023 was that time we could definitively say that this was the final bit of attack on titan we'll ever get to sell god damn it to be fair it's just a new chapter <laughs> when i read the headlines i was like oh fuck what really 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 but then apparently it's just it's just, it's just it was just a new chapter levi spinoff is that it just a levi spinoff all right all right it's a new chapter at least for now what are you looking for hon okay <sighs> keep milking it no no let it die let it die attack on titans attack on titans time is over maybe give us an epilogue that's all we need that's all i want that is all i want oh I'm sad you didn't win anything, but it's okay. It's okay. You got displaced by Bocci. You got displaced by Bocci. I'll allow it. I'll allow it for Bocci. I will allow it for Bocci. Sometimes you just need a dose of wholesomeness to brighten up your day. But being a dude watching anime can sometimes feel like... So what anime have you been watching? Oh, I'm watching this anime called Skip and Loafer, and it's just one of the most cute and adorable... Yeah, 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 yeah. Yo, you catch the latest episode of Jujutsu Kaisen at all? There was nothing... When I, when I first saw that... <laughs> When I first saw that uh, the sound effect meme thing, this I don't know what it is about having a sound effect and uh, and just putting it through an echo filter because it's like the the other sound effect that makes me laugh whenever I hear it is the fart reverb sound effect, which I've also used extensively in my videos as well. <laughs> so apparently, uh, maybe next time there's just an Among Us sound effect. You put it through a v reverb filter, uh, and I'm just gonna lose my shit. Apparently, what is why? Why does reverb equals funny? I don't understand. Thing in 2023 that made me come out of every episode feeling as good as Skip and Loafer did. The shit was a weekly injection of sunshine into my veins. I mean, just look at this opening alone. The colors, the vibes, the catchy song, this goddamn dance. It's enough to make any grown ass man internally scream. Ah! This is so cute! Hey, 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 hey. Fuck yeah, violence, am I right, lads? Skip and Loafer. I don't, I don't internally scream that shit, man. I, I said internally, I said internally scream. You saw, you saw my fucking video where I reacted to all the openings last year. I was, I was, I was fucking screaming, man. <laughs> Yo, feelings and shit. Yo, cute, cute stuff and shit. Yo, I watched the skip and opening 
I watch the skip and loaf opening and I and I <laughs> and I just scream out every single time, baby. It's about as straightforward as you can get. A country bumpkin moves to the big city and adjusts to her new high school life. It doesn't need any complex plot because it exudes this air of authenticity that makes you feel so goddamn good. It's rare to find an anime as genuine as this one because when I say high school life, I don't imagine having feelings though. I know, right? Ima that, like, <laughs> imagine actually having feelings. <laughs> These are teenagers, real teenagers, just enjoying their lives to the fullest. No melodrama, no overly anime bullshit. This is youth and adolescence at its most pure without feeling like it's been put through some moe anime filter. And there's just something so endearing about that. But Giga, come on, Adol, why would I be interested in teenagers? Look, as a certified man, wait, that line sounded really wrong. Look, as a certified man, baby, pretending to be a grown up, let me tell you. Adulting sucks. Recognize the song. Jobs. We have responsibilities. We have goddamn anytime, taxes. Anytime Sometimes you guys recognize the OST when I when I and more straightforward and when I time take it from another show, maybe you're looking back at that time through rose-tinted glasses. But whether you are or you aren't, you'll never know. This track always gives me uh, good feelings. Again. Ever. And it's those little moments, those simple times you cherish. Anyone can name the can anyone name the show that this track is from me. at like, all? There's this one scene where our main girl comes home for the first time during. Her hey, summer someone break. got she it. Someone got it. Yeah, Bunny Girl Senpai. In, but go on, right. Miss Bunny Girl her Senpai. Her taking the day off, <laughs> and she has the whole summer ahead of her. So on this boiling hot day, her mum slices her up a watermelon, and the episode slows down to a crawl. As I you notice the Monogatari OSTs. Basically, my my videos are Monogatari OSTs and Bunny Girl Senpai OSTs. God. Okay. I fucking love this scene where it just plays and you just like fades out. Um, I wanted to get the same feeling, but what ruined this is I YouTube's copyright system. I I wanted to just like let it sit on this scene for like way longer, and YouTube was like, no. No, you can't, you can't play this scene. It's this too long. So you might notice that, uh, sorry, get, getting the immersion out. Every, every one of these scenes is super zoomed in. And there's a reason for that. There is a reason for that. It's my, the best way I could get around, uh, YouTube's copyright system. Cause I wanted to play this scene for as long as possible to like, just set the atmosphere that, uh, that, this like the feeling that it gave me, but this is like as much as I can get away with. Ooh, ASMR. Nee-chan, Fumi-chan, come here. Huh? Come on, Fumi. Just a little bit. And just like that, her summer was over. Oh, oh. I don't know if that scene only stuck out to me. Okay, the, the reason the reason I talked about that was because that I that scene had a pro, such a profound effect on me because I don't sometimes you see a scene and you're like what the fuck's going on? I don't I don't get it. Why why is everyone stopped talking? And then like when 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 the scene stops and you just take a moment to just like appreciate all of the background and everything. I was like this is weird. And it it changed from like this is weird to like Oh damn, this is wait, why am I oh this is nice. And then when she's like, yo, your friends here, I was like, oh. Oh shit, now I feel sad that it's over. It's it's I it actually like got me emotional. I was like and it's I don't think it's even meant to be an emotional scene. It just it it got me emotional and I'm like, what the fuck just happened? What just happened? <laughs> I understand what happened now, but I was just like, shit, what what just what just happened, man? When anime wants you to feel sad, it goes... <laughs> when anime wants you to know one of its characters is crazy, it goes... <laughs> when anime is trying to hint at something important, it's like... It was me. Is this a live pre-recording? No, this is not a pre-recording, my good sir. This is not a pre-recording. This is a live. That Rick and Morty fans say they do. Ha ha! Here is a show that doesn't take you by the hand and leads you, but leaves you to discover the story on your own. It drops you into this insane yes. world, gives you a hand. It's, it's uh, I'm, I'm reacting to pre-recorded material. You are right there, though. You are, you are right. The reason we are reacting to myself is because I can watch this without getting copyright claims 
and because it is myself, okay, also I was eating dinner, I like so I just needed I something see. to put on. What are you ladies doing? You're praying this doesn't have the ugly bastard tag on it. The girl brings out a gun that looks like this and immediately gears start turning. Wait, is this some sci-fi world shit or is that a damn Fisher Price toy? I really, really hope that we get a second season of Heavenly Delusion, just because I feel like I really loved the style as 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 I as I talk about. I, I really love the style of like show no, show don't tell. Um, and I feel like there is an anime that's airing this season that tries something similar to Heavenly Delusion, and that's the new Bone Show, Rouge Metallic or whatever it's called, whatever it is. And it made me realize how good of a job this show did because Rouge Metallic also really tries the show don't tell approach, but that just doesn't tell you enough. Metallic Rouge, yeah. Like that that went for the show no tell approach, but you instead of trying instead of being able to figure out what's going on, you just like you were just really fucking confused because you didn't know what anything was going on. Whereas this fed you just enough information to make you give a sense to to give you a sense about what's going on in the wider world, where but then it still kept enough from you to give you like to, to to allow you to figure things out yourself, and I think that's just such a fine balance that I've gotten more that I've gotten more of an appreciation for. What you think the bandits start attacking anyway, and they fight back. So you're like, ah, oh, okay, maybe she was just bluffing. So this is just a normal world after all. Oh, that's a gun gun. In a single scene, the show has set up its world, got you asking questions, played with your expectations, answered your question, left you needing more answers, all without directly telling you a goddamn thing. This is Heavenly Delusion for all 13 episodes. This had one of the most intriguing worlds of any show this year, but trusted you to piece everything together yourself. There is no wasted scene, no out of character moment. Everything is a possible puzzle piece that- God, uh, there, there is no anime last year that had me such- gave me such a satisfying aha moment, you know? It's- 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 it, Almost, it was almost like playing a game, you know, when you f when you figure out a puzzle game and you're like, aha, when you when you start to figure out the crumbs that this show gives you and you start to see the connections, it's, just, it's such a satisfying feeling. Clues you into the bigger picture. What happened to this world? Why are there nightmarish creatures that are eating people? What kind of sick experimentations is going on behind the scenes? Were you paying attention even now? Because you just saw a random drawing of a fish with legs that looks oddly like this horrific thing. And the real question is, did you see a connection without me saying anything? Sometime Only render and this were on the same level. Realize how many I, th I think I'd agree with that. I, really like, I also really like Sometime Render. Also, both Disney, also both Disney shows as well. Also both Disney shows. makes this world as intriguing as it is goddamn terrifying. By the end, we've only just seen a slice of the larger whole, but it's so refreshing to see an anime that will have your neurons firing in a way where you don't have to worry about watching with headphones on for once. You know, most of the time. Disney cooking? Nah, Disney buying shows and then no one watches it because it's on Disney, man. For many years now, China has been pumping out their own <laughs> animations, seeing if they could capitalize on that anime audience. This and is still going like, strong, man. man. Mao Chinese Mao is so overpowering. In what a great went, character. Right, but what if we had Chinese cartoons? Japan. <laughs> Apothecary Diaries is an anime that takes place in ancient China, not China, in a palace setting that immediately reminded me of these badly dubbed Chinese soap operas I sometimes- It's funny because I'm getting into more manhua and manhua now, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm waiting for some adaptations of some of these, uh, of some of these Chinese comics and Korean comics, man. I just, I, I would love to see more adaptations, man. Walking to my mum. Yo, get, when, when's, when's the omnipotent, uh, omnipotent- Omnificent reader's viewpoint is that? It's like I always forget the fucking name, man. As a kid. Always the forget I didn't the name. Fully realize what the big hook of this show was. Was it the house MD? <laughs> ORV. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna stories? just start it calling it ORV from now on. The palace politics. Yes. So and much easier that, to say. Simply put, the best female character we could find all year. So oh, by the way, any regression manhwa do you guys recommend? Uh, I've been getting a new addiction, um, and it's regression man. Manhua, or it doesn't doesn't need to be manhua. It could be manhua, or it could be manga. I mean, Redo of Healer is a regression manga, technically, you know. Milf hunting. 
<laughs> you, you, you know what's horrible? I, I can actually see that being a manhua name, man. Some, some of the titles are just like unhinged. SSS Class Suicide Hunter? Yeah, I think, I think I'm reading that. Legend of the Northern Blade? Oh, that one's sick. Oh, uh, yeah. Fuck yeah. SSS Class Suicide Hunter? Yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying that. The Boxer? The Boxer is not a regression manhua. That is just a good manhua. <laughs> give me, give me regression trash. I need something to fill my isekai trash man hole. And the Boxer is, that's, that's just, that's just good. That's just a good one. That's not- that's not trashy, man. <laughs> Is Milf Hunter actually a regression manhwa? I- I gotta check this now. <laughs> I don't know if you're capping or not. And the thing about manhwa is that... I can see that actually being untitled. Is it Milf Hunting in another world? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Milf Hunting in another world? This is a thing? <laughs> this is a thing. Okay. I asked for regression, Manwa. If I wanted to fucking read Sexercise and all the other cultured Manwa. <laughs> I, I have enough neurons Sometimes activating right now, man. Takes. For far too long, anime seems to think we want only one thing, and it's this. No. How about nothing more than just a well written, <laughs> believable, compelling female protagonist? Hey, 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 hey. And this. Mao Mao is a character that fit, deserves to be in the running for one of the best The amount of manhwa, regression manhwa, that has just like SSS tier. SSS tier this. SSS tier. A good female character is. <laughs> it's not that she's so not like many. other girls or premium waifu picked or a strong female character <laughs> trademark. She's just it's, a girl. It's like, it's like, it's like having isekai types. It's like the isekai equivalent of having the strongest ex. She doesn't have to be unfeminine. In regression manhwa, it's SSSS person does this. Bait and still absolutely slay when she needs to. She's not strong because she can beat up a hundred guys, but because she's headstrong in her own values and beliefs. Here is a clever realist who acknowledges her place in the palace hierarchy, but isn't afraid to throw hands when shit needs to get done. God damn, my girl just factory reset that bitch. Seeing Mao Mao passionately solve these medical mysteries while asserting her fucking dominance all over the palace politics made this such a compelling watch. You know, one thing about Apothecary Diaries that confused me the first time I watched it, I remember watching the first episode, and you, you know when Mao Mao gets kidnapped? I totally, the way she reacts to her getting kidnapped is so, like, un nonchalant. I actually thought, oh, did I, did I miswatch that? Did it, did, did, did she just not actually get kidnapped? I feel like I dreamt that because there's no way she would get kidnapped and, and just react so nonchalant. I actually thought I made that up in my mind. I was like, I was like, oh, she must have, why is she here? Um, I, she, she must have joined the temple or something. I think, no, she kind of got kidnapped, right? <laughs> must have dreamed that. <laughs> and hopefully more shows will be able to take notes of great characters like this. Pluto. All right. Do you, do you think? Do you think this is? Do you think this is going to win any awards next year? All of these shows. All of these shows. Uh All of these shows that aired in fall are going to be eligible for the anime awards next year. Do you think it's even going to get a nomination? See, here's why I hope that there's going to be more. Uh, there's gonna be more categories. If there was a best sci-fi, if there was a best sci-fi, and there are plenty of sci-fi, I know. If there was a best sci-fi category, this would get nominated. This 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 would get nominated and possibly win. Um, if if there are more categories, you know. But if not, this might get nominated for best drama. Here's hoping. Is hoping. Appreciating the statue of David up close, getting to see Lionel Messi dribble past five players, watching Jack Nicholson command every scene he's in. It doesn't matter what the subject matter is, it's always enthralling to see an absolute master of their craft at work. And that's the exact feeling I get whenever <laughs> JJK, I get to see <laughs> anything written by Naoki Urasawa. And Pluto was absolutely no exception. I once created a robot that was perfect. The greatest robot the world has ever seen. 
There are only a few mangaka that can boast such a legendary status as Urasawa himself, when you have a track record of titles like Monster, an absolute masterpiece with arguably the greatest villain anime has seen. 20th Century Boys, not just my favorite manga of all time, but one of my favorite pieces of fiction. God, I hope, I hope, I hope we get a, I hope we get a fucking 20th Century Boys adaptation, but also, I'm terrified if we do. I'm, I'm absolutely terrified. I, I am so terrified. <laughs> How how many episodes are we going to need, man? How many fucking episodes are we going to need in order for me to be satisfied with this adaptation? But, oh my god, it would be so good. <laughs> ...to exist. Pluto is meant to be one of his weaker works, according to diehard fans. And goddamn, if this is him operating at his lowest potential, this is like sending in your weakest fighter, and that fighter turns out to be Gojo fucking Satoru, and... Wait. Yeah, that analogy checks out. <laughs> This has all the cool Thank you, Jujutsu Kaisen, for giving me that joke. Tale. He sets the stage. I, 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 I wouldn't have known that if, uh, if, of if, if you didn't tell me that without my, uh, memories, without my consent. He's done the impossible and taken a human life. He hooks you into his world and leaves you with a single question when the first episode ends. Just how deep does this rabbit hole go? The man's ability to construct a mystery and captivate an audience through his mastery of suspense, to me, has the same level of craftsmanship as seeing a master blacksmith make a legendary sword. Every episode is so dense with emotion, a plot that will keep you guessing through all the twists and turns, sitting on top of the sheer thematic depth of the story that every single character carries on their back. And by the end of it all, he'll leave you with these ideas that you'll be thinking about far after the credits roll. This is some of the finest storytelling you can find any Anywhere. If God. I had to make a guess why this didn't make as big I of an impact love as it probably Sal, should man. have, well, this was an adaptation of a sci-fi manga it's that got was such written an old 20 years way ago of that like, was originally a reimagining of, like, of Astro Boy, a manga that came out 60 years ago. So, inevitably, there might be some aspects that feel a bit... You know, I was I was talking to Malin's husband, uh, and apparently he was just at a bar, and you might... any. If anyone's read 20th Century Boys, you know that Urasawa plays the guitar as well. And he loves music so much that he literally integrated a song into his story. His story that is a manga. He wrote a song for a manga. Just let that sink in for a second, right? He, he actually like wrote a song for his story that was never going to be heard unless it got like an adaptation um bob lennon what a song and uh Malin's husband went to a bar and uh, urasawa was there and he performed bob lennon i've never been more jealous of someone in my life can you fucking imagine that it's oh oh i'm i'm i'm, I'm so fucking jealous should have been me it should have been me not him Dated. What's this? A war involving the invasion of some Middle Eastern country predicated on the possible developments of robots of mass destruction? Hmm. Yeah, does oh, Urasawa hey, still making stories of, or is he just chilling now? He's man? a bad guy. I is he just chilling? You more, my I mean, he. Adolf. But along with a slightly. He's, he's ending, got a good enough legacy. He can just chill if he wants to, man. But I, I want to know right if he's still like so making stuff. I have one question left. Are we ready to attempt? He's a writing Asadora. Oh, anime? Okay. Right. I mean, Jujutsu Kaisen is, still is technically number three, my favorite, my third favorite anime of last year. So, you know, that's why I was being lenient on it on some awards, guys. <laughs> episode 17 went so hard, bro. I don't even know what episode you're talking season, about. They all went hard. Of great action, but you know it all builds up to this one. <laughs> We're at most two episodes where the production values skyrocket and you're treated to this insanely animated fight that will drop your jaw to the floor. These are the scenes that everyone remembers and defines the top fights of the year. Did you just... Fuck. I just, I just realized something about the OST production. Um, I should have voted just Kaisen for best OST. Um, one thing that I've realized, maybe, maybe, maybe I'll vote for it next year, but one thing that really stood out about every fight is every fight has such a unique identity to it. And you realize that it's almost like, it's almost like watching, like listening to music, right? Because every fight feels like they have a different genre, a bit, a different beat, a different tempo. And the music for each of the fights of Jujutsu Kaisen is so like different 
that just ties into that that fight's identity and i think that's so cool and i didn't realize this until re-watching jujutsu kaisen season two for like for for this and best of anime of the year video where i'm like why does why does it why does it feel like every fight has such a different feel to it and obviously animation big plays a big part but i didn't realize that i think i would argue an even bigger part was the music that they uh that uh the music identity that they had with every fight sakaisen went how about we do that for every single episode I don't think I've ever quite experienced the collective adrenaline-filled ride Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2 has given me. You put on an episode and be watching some of the sickest shit that's ever been put on screen, and you think to yourself, there's no way they could ever top this. And it's at that moment, the show will look you dead in the eye and go, I'll fucking do it again! And then it does. Again, and again, and again, and again, and again, and again. Oh, there was, the mo there was this moment in the Anime Awards where, uh, the- was- was it like- Was it the director of Jujutsu Kaisen? They, they won the award, right? They won the award for like best director. And I was just like, his speech, I don't know if it was the translation or anything like that. Uh, his speech was like, I, I don't know if there was like some subtle shade thrown towards, uh, towards, the, uh, towards the studio where he was like, oh, this is <laughs> when he was like, Guys, you know what I'm talking about. Where, uh, what was it? What was it? What was it that he said? Yes, he like he was like, as directors, you know how it is. Where, you know, we we know how hard it can be, but we just pull through anyway. I'm like, I remember, I remember, like listening to that. I'm like, wait, wait, what? Uh, it's, it's, it's just, are we are we are we getting real here? Are we, are we getting real? Are we getting real? And then when he was just like, thank you to the team, you guys made it happen. I was like, oh. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we got amazing. we the way the way you said like he, the way you said is like oh we just got through it we we got through it don't worry like we always do I was like oh god <laughs> moment so many sick ass scenes midway through the season the hype got to me and I excitedly tweeted out it should be goddamn illegal for an anime to go this hard I I I did anyone see this tweet <laughs> because it was up for about five minutes it it was up for about five minutes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you did. No, I thought I was, I thought I was quick. I thought I was quick. <laughs> no. Oh, I thought I, I thought I deleted it before anyone saw it. Oh no. <laughs> I think I couldn't remember the original tweet. I, I want to, I want to see if I can find the uh, because I don't, I don't think I said this word for words. Uh, it was, it was, it was, just, oh, it, it was, a, it was a noof moment, man. It was, it was a noof moment. Uh, I, cause I, I, I think, I think, I think I tweeted out. I, I think my exact wording, cause I was trying to remember my exact wording. I think my exact wording was, is it even illegal for Jujutsu Kaisen to go this hard? Or is it even, a, oh no, is it even legal for Jujutsu Kaisen to go this hard? Or is it even legal for a show to go this hard? And, and and as soon as I tweeted out, because I caught up to Jujutsu Kaisen the same day that every animator just came out about it. And I was just like, oh, wait, what? What? Oh, this is, oh. And I will never remember. I don't know if you're here in chat right now. I will never remember the first reply I got was the fucking screenshot of like Walter White in the car behind the glass. And it, and it was just the caption, no gone, don't do it. All the anime just, just came out. Don't do it, gone, gone. <laughs> <laughs> And then, and it was that reply when I was just like, okay, okay, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna delete this. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna delete this tweet. <laughs> That was the same day all this came out. One of the biggest talking points so yeah, has been the treatment of true their animators story. during the season. And I think it's a testament to the blood, sweat, and tears poured into this that we got a product this fantastic. <laughs> Thank you fantastic, to that tweeter. You saved me. You, 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 you saved me. Through. Demon Slayer, Mob Psycho. This may not have gotten the opportunity to be as polished as shows like that, but it is unmatched when it comes to its raw stylistic flair. Every single fight has a unique identity not constrained to one genre of action. We got gritty hand-to-hand -hand combat, city-wide disaster-level brawls, insanely unique powers, idol dance, 
beatdowns. There was a mecha fight. A fucking mecha fight in a shonen anime. The amount of hype. The amount of fucking sheer disrespect. We got fucking rabbits throwing hands. This was one of the greatest showcases I've ever seen of, for lack of a better term, Fucking cool shit. This felt like the purest celebration of fight scenes and choreography. We were in the audience, they got to marvel at a symphony of some of the coolest set pieces you can find in the medium. The Shibuya arc may not have been peak storytelling, or the peak of all shonen arcs, but right now, this is the peak of action spectacle. <laughs> I chose my words very, very carefully on that last line. <laughs> I chose my words very, very carefully carefully to end that segment because um because it's i i have a feeling i it's i i have a feeling right i'm wondering how well jujutsu kaisen as a series is going to age um because i do think that jujutsu kaisen season two the shibi arc is the peak of action spectacle i have a feeling that the issues that I found with basically its storytelling and its characters um, might might come in more to like might be more visible the more that the series goes on. I didn't really care in this scene in this season just because the action was so good, but. <clears throat> But um, I don't know. I don't. I'm 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 waiting to bring up this conversation, but I don't know if people are ready for it. I don't know if people are ready for this conversation. But um, Demon Slayer and Jujutsu Kaisen, they they love to beef with each other. The fan base loves to beef with each other. Are they are they so different? Are they are they that different? Are they? Hmm. I. <laughs> Are they so different from one another? Are we ready to have that conversation? Because I I lo I love both series, uh, but I love both series for very similar reasons. Because the action goes really, really fucking hard when it needs to. I'll 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 wait. I'll wait to sizzle. I'll wait for that take to sizzle for a bit before I properly serve it. <laughs> The way elves see this world is a mystery. I thank you, Freyren. It's solely because of you that this retired hero could have one final adventure. Freyren opens on the story of an elf girl who takes for granted the time she oh, has. Oh, Alan, why you gotta bring back the feels like this, man? Her companions age, and before she has the chance to fully get to know them, they're gone. It's a regretful, poignant tale that shoots straight to your goddamn soul. And then the opening's like... <laughs> the show took a different approach to fantasy adventure while encapsulating everything that the genre is about. There might not be any demon lord to defeat or world- It wasn't that depressing. Free Run isn't depressing. Free Run, like, everyone's, everyone's like, oh, Free Run, I cried at Free Run, and people are like, oh, it's depressing. Free Run's not depressing at all. Free Run, uh, it's just emotional. It's, it's poignant and somber and emotional, but it's not depressing. You don't, you don't cry because it's sad. You cry just because you have this, you, you're filled up with so many beautiful emotions that you don't really know how to like, how to express it all. So you just end up crying. Um, Oyasumi Pun Pun is depressing. Evangelion is depressing. This, this is just, with su such a beautiful show that you don't know how to process the emotions you feel a lot of times aside from just fucking shedding a tear and just getting some of those emotions out of you man to save but instead we have a journey about <laughs> my hero academia is depressing life, beautiful things <laughs> you might have missed if you forgot to look for them i showed this to a mate and he was like free ren you mean side quest the anime and i bloody ate him
because of how fucking accurate that is. Yet it's through those detours you take along the road to your destination that Free Ren absolutely shines. It's the type of show that grips you without ever needing to hit you with any flashy, high-intensity action scenes to keep your attention. You and then hit you with these Actually, flashy, wasn't high -intensity that said action that. scenes. <laughs> this series didn't just go hard in its animation in any way, shape, or form, but chooses to do this so This shows anyway. you that this maybe side like quests with the real content all along, guys. Maybe, like it's, maybe your life is all about the side quests, eh? For the world-saving adventure she went on, the slice of memories we get are those small moments that really defined the time she spent with her party. And as she forms new bonds, you start to see those small pieces she be- I'm sad I didn't get to talk about Evan Cool's soundtrack in depth in here. Um, because his soundtrack goes so hard. And it's such a big reason about why the emotions and why the tone and why the mood hits so hard. Like I list these are these are the types of tracks I listen to, and I I just want to cry, you know. And it's not it's, it's it makes you like it, even if you never heard the tracks before, it just makes you feel nostalgic, man. It's it's so good, and he did such a good job. Begins to pick up from the people. I love him since Violet Evergarden. I I agree. I think this is even this is better than Violet every Evergarden. This is fantasy tale I, I think to be. what he it did on this like was these, even better than Violet make Evergarden. Somehow nostalgic for an experience you've never had, friends you've never made. But at its heart, it's a gentle reminder to cherish the things in your life that really matter. To make the most of the time with the people you truly value. So. I put this at number two because obviously when I wrote this, uh, Free Ren was about halfway finished and Vinland Saga had affected me more than Free Ren did. I'm not sure if that would still hold true um, if, if, you know, when I wrote this, what I have experienced with Free Ren is, was out um, now. If if the full series was out, sorry, I'm just I'm 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 saying words. Um, at this moment, there are few times where anime can affect me in real life, and Free Run actually like Free Run Free Run actually Free Run actually changed me for the better. Um, and I know that's like fucking cheesy to say and all that shit because there are only but there are like sometimes where there's I find a show that has reminded me or something or has taught me something. Uh Villain Saga definitely taught me a lot uh when I read the manga. When I watch Free Ren, um I'm gonna I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna have a confession, guys. Anime Best of Anime 2023 it was very, very late. Um I I think I released it on the last day of the month. And you can thank Free Run for that. You can, you can actually thank Free Run for that. Because I was in Thailand when I wrote this. And I was like, I, I had this schedule thing where I needed to script up to a certain point. I, I needed to script up to a certain point uh, because I, you know, after I was going to fly back home, I had trash taste recordings. I had a bunch of streams that was sponsored that was scheduled to do. So I needed to get a chunk of script done and ready and so i was like writing free run um and like i was i was watching i was watching the show i was watching everything it did and it just like i, I had this moment and it was a story about that old uh that old guy i can't remember what episode it was um but i'd realized that i I was like, my parents were in my home in Thailand and I'd hardly spent any time with them. The old guard, yeah, the old guard, Vol. Um, I'd hardly spent any time with them, even though I wanted to go out and just have them one-on-one -on -one time with my parents. Um, and I was just in a fucking, I was, I was just in a grind. I was just in a, I was just like grinding because I was like, I can't, I can't let you guys down because I need to get this out because... I need to do this and then I, I need to I need to uh I need to get the winter anime up uh because I love because I don't want to go out a whole month without recording. Um and then I watched Free Run and I was just like Why the fuck am I doing this? <laughs> why 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 am I choosing to really, really grind out for this deadline that I've set in my head? Uh, when my dad is right there, my mum is right there, I have not had any one-on-one -on -one time with them, and I'm going home very, very soon, 
I rarely get to see them because I'm out of the country and I'm stressed and because I don't want to let you guys down. And then, and then just watching free run, just like, I, I know sometimes, you know, some shit where you know that, Hey, you should make the most of your time with the people like around you, yada, yada. We've, we've been told that plenty of times, but sometimes it's seeing a story this powerful that just sometimes you just need a reminder. Sometimes you just need like that reminder of what's actually important because sometimes you can get caught up in your own, uh, in your own head. Um, so I finished that episode and I was like, fuck it, dad, we're going, we're going for, uh, we're going for coffee and we're going, mom, we're going for dinner. And I missed the deadline. Uh, it, the video got delayed and I don't regret it. Absolutely. I, I, I have zero fucking regrets. That was the best decision I have made in the past year. And it was just like that one moment. And I, I have this show to thank for it. If, if I didn't watch this show, I would have just been stuck in that same mindset. Um, and I was just like, fuck, thank you. Thank you, Free Run, for reminding me what is important in life. I know family should come first, but thank you is all I wanted to say. And that's my yapping for the day. Hey, no. <clears throat> I've killed so many people. I will be reborn. And I will atone for all that I've done. That's all we've ever wanted. Something in this world that can give us a reason to keep going. When I was a kid, my father Whoa. would read me bedtime stories that my childish mind would always be absolutely immersed in. Accounts of hungry, hungry caterpillars, no rainbow awards. fishes, no ugly awards. ducklings. These were the greatest no stories awards. I'd ever heard, because they were. And as you grow older, start learning new- I gotta I got ask, because uh, my my childhood was like, I don't know, I don't know what story, what uh, bedtime stories or what storybooks were common when you guys were kids. But yeah, I, I, I didn't realize that like Hungry Hungry Caterpillar and like the, uh, the goldfish, uh, was like a, was like a UK thing. Uh, I, I don't know if like Americans, what, if Americans had it, but, uh, I don't, I don't know. Rainbow fish, rainbow fish. That was the one I said. I don't, I don't know if every country has their own iteration of different storybooks that it seems like every kid just had. By experiencing real life, you forget the effect these stories can have on you. A good story can not only entertain you, it can move you, give you a new perspective, teach you something you never knew you could learn that you can take far beyond the confounds of watching some piece of entertainment. That is the power of a great tale, and that is everything that Vinland Saga Season 2 encapsulates. Oh, it's so I good! <laughs> oh, I'm so Watching this makes me even more sad that it didn't win anything, man. Oh with my tragedy, god. Vengeance and violence. So to anyone oh. coming into this season blind, you probably would have been taken aback. The violence takes a back seat to a pure... Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm even more sad now, man. I'm vengeance even more sad that this didn't win anything. Not a single thing. Honor, Not a single glory, thing. Sacrifice, all left by the wayside, and all that remains is people just trying their best to find their place in this merciless world. World. While most series would cower at the thought of shifting gears this drastically, it is that strong juxtaposition that gives Villain Saga's message the weight it has, exemplified by possibly the greatest character development we've ever seen in this medium. Thorofin's transformation is something that transcends entertainment. A man who starts off as a shell of a human, broken, empty, unworthy of redemption, but through every person he meets, every relationship he forms, he starts to learn to pick up the broken pieces of his former self that slowly but surely fill his soul up. As you see him encounter conflict, you will secretly wish for that instant gratification that he'll revert back to his previous savage self. But as you witness this journey of a man fighting so desperately to find peace, who learns that it's okay not just to forgive others, but to forgive himself as well, it becomes an experience that will linger with you and invites you to find your own solace. Watching Vinland Saga Are we gonna see like character development like this ever again? Ever told by my dad. <laughs> It'll grip you with the purest of tales packed with nothing but raw human emotion that will I know that talking to the author, to the brim. We'll go to and by the end of it all, like, this is coming to an end soon-ish. 
unless it's coming to an end soonish. You can take with you. It reminds you that change is not just ready, man. I don't, I don't know if I'm ready, man. I don't know if I'm ready. It doesn't come easy. It's a long, hard, unforgiving road, but you can get there, even if every day you only take one small step at a time. We will always find a reason to fight each other, no matter what time period we are in, weapons we can use, or tools we have at our disposal. But no matter how broken you think the world is, there is still meaning in trying to build a better tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow I can make a brighter day come. Maybe tomorrow I can be just that little bit kinder. Maybe tomorrow I can become a slightly Zero better word, version Andy, don't myself. Me, <laughs> you are capable of letting go of that hatred, even if that hatred is towards yourself. You have no enemies. You know what? You didn't win any awards, Villain Saga, but... You won my heart. <laughs> you won. You won all of our hearts, man. <laughs> you won. You won all of our hearts. <sighs> oh, villain saga. Oh man. You have no awards. <laughs> Why are you gonna do it like that, man? Yo. <laughs> you have no awards. <laughs> oh man. Why are you going? You don't ruin the moment. It's okay. It's okay. I know. I know what the moment is. I I made the. I wrote the moment. <laughs> yeah. It. I actually. It. It was so long. It. It's. It's obvious when I watching the video back. I did not know how I was going to end the video, because I was just like, I wanna. I wanna what final joke or what final thing or what final message to end this video on. And then, I wrote like. And then I thought I was going to have a little outro like I always do in my videos. And then as soon as, as, as soon as like, as soon as I thought like I have no enemies or you have no enemies, I was like, there is, that has to be the ending line. That has, that, that, that has to be the ending line because I can't think of a line that deserves to be at the end of like that year of anime. Um, and I didn't want to ruin it by saying my outro. So I was just like, no, it's going to end on that quote of the year. And you would, we're just going to cut to black, Alan. You just, 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 just cut to black. We, we, we don't, we don't need to do anything else. And he was like, <laughs> cause he was chasing me up for like, when the fuck are you going to record the outro? Um, and I'm sorry, patrons, because normally I'd give you a shout out, but I'm like, nah, nah, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, patrons. Uh, normally I give a shout out to all my patrons and I'm like, no, no, this is this, this, this there's no other way I could end this year. <laughs> there's no other way I could end this year. <clears throat> all right. It is almost midnight and I have been streaming for seven and a half hours. Um, thank you for chilling out with me. It's been a while since I've done an anime stream like this. And uh, thank you for watching my own video with me while I eat my dinner, uh, even though it was a very, very late dinner. Enjoy your YouTube content. Much love from Germany. Uh, Germany. Uh, Germany, keep it up. Thank you very much, man. I am going to go to bed now, but I'm going to be streaming again soon. Uh, we, if you missed the earlier announcement, I am going to be redoing anime watch streams this coming month, we are going to be starting off with Mushoku Tensei, which is going to be streaming uh, on the 17th of this month. And uh, we have we have Muse Asia, so uh, we can almost watch it worldwide. All right. YouTube, if anyone is still watching on YouTube, thank you very much for watching my what i think is my first youtube stream you know this is my first youtube stream that didn't get completely banned i don't always stream on youtube i'm gonna try streaming on youtube more often but just in case i stream way more often on twitch uh, uh and i will do be doing streams on twitch when i don't know what the dmca situation is on youtube 
recently did a stream where I went through all of the top anime openings. Uh, and that's definitely not going to be something I could do on YouTube. Uh, I'm going to be doing a stream this month where I go through the anime chart. Uh, we watch every trailer and we're going to see what's worth watching. Definitely can't stream that on YouTube either. So if you want to catch more streams, come, come here on Twitch. But if I can get away with it, I will also stream on YouTube. All right. Who do I raid? Ooh, Kuro is on. Let's raid Kuro. All right. Say hi to Kuro for me. I think he just got back from Thailand. If he's not still in Thailand. <laughs> but yeah, say hi to him for me. Anyway, though, hope you guys enjoyed the stream. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.